Hey guys, welcome to episode two of the Battlefield Esports Roundup, or as we like to call it, the bf -er. And I'm joined with Brett, as always. Brett, how's it going? It's going all right, man. I'm pretty excited. we got some cool stuff coming up. And uh, I think first off, we're just going to go right into it, if it sounds good or with you. We're going to go with the CGL Launch Tournament. Now, the CGL is the Cyber Gaming League, and it's this uh, 4v4, no, 5v5, uh, Conquest Infantry Only League on PC. Here are the tournament brackets. We can see them here on the screen. And uh, actually, I just casted uh, a recent match in this tournament. Uh, I casted the Shot Docs versus uh, uh, Exertus. No, Exertus. Exertus, was that right? It was Exertus. It was Exertus. And uh, on Operation Metro, you can check it out at, at the links below for those that are interested. Uh, really intense match on Operation Metro. But we got a lot of other matches that are going to be coming up in the coming weeks. So uh, hopefully we get uh, uh, to do some uh, commentary on a few of these matches. Absolutely. And if you are one of these teams who are in the CGL, please, Please send in your replays into us because we love to cast them. We really would. So do it. All right. So next off, uh, after the, the CGL tournament, we got the WEL series or the War XS League. And uh, guys, they have a lot of, uh, of leagues in here. They got a 4v4, 5v5, 8s, and 12s. But what I think we should focus on, Dastro, is the 5s and the 8s. I think those are um, really right now the bread and butter of Battlefield as we know it. So... Uh, first off, the uh, the 8v8, the preseason, is going to be starting next week. So guys, if you're in the 8v8s or, or 5s, uh, preseason will start next week. You have to play in both of your preseason matches to be able to be eligible for the league for the rest of the year. So please show up for your matches. Make sure that you, uh, you, you uh, get everything straightened out with your team captains. And unfortunately, guys, the signups are closed. But, you know, definitely be checking up on them. These guys have been around for a couple of seasons now. And uh, I don't think they're going to be going anywhere. They've seen some major growth here in the recent uh, uh, few months. And uh, they, it's going to be pretty exciting. They have some good teams in it. And uh, we hope to be able to cast some really exciting matches from this series. Yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to it as well. And remember, guys, this is a, a PC-only, fives and eights. So for those that haven't signed up, uh, I don't think you're going to have a chance to get into it. But uh, but maybe they'll change. Well, I don't know. If they, there's enough demand, maybe they'll open up their... Uh, the, the 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 rosters uh, for a few more weeks. We'll see though. Let's go right, right. Let's go right though into the Sevo 5v5 playoffs. We're in the playoffs. We're getting so close to the finals, and we saw some pretty close matches the last few days. What were those matches, Brett? Well, uh, the the I don't know if you'd say they were really super close, but you know they they were kind of on a bad map for close matches. This was on Sign Crossing. Uh, this is the the round four of the losers bracket. So pretty much the winners bracket is done and over with. If you guys uh, have not known, actually no, you guys don't know. I don't think we went over that last time. So SA did beat No Mercy uh, zero to one twenty six or two twenty six. I'm sorry. And uh, so they did win the winners bracket, and they are waiting patiently right now for the finals to play their championship game. So back down to to round four in the lower bracket. We're going to go with Rival Gaming Invictus. Now, this was on Sign Crossing. Not the best map for, for uh, close games. Long games, but not necessarily close games uh, because it is a four-flag map. Now, uh, Rival Gaming Invictus Esports, Rival ended up taking that out with like, 300 tickets. And then you had No Mercy uh, Gaming versus Nexus BF3. And Nexus ended up winning this by 204 tickets. Now, I expected No Mercy to put up more of a fight on this. This was the North American team. But Nexus is a good team. They know how to play that map. Um, and they just pretty much outplayed them. They they outpositioned them. Uh, round one was fairly close, but round two was pretty much just a blowout. Uh, I did I did watch the game. In fact, I have video of the game. And expect a cast from that to be posted up here pretty soon. But that was a pretty good one. And then next we have the uh, the Nexus and Rival match that happened. Round five of the lower bracket. And this was played on Epicenter. Now, I don't know about you, Dasgro, but I don't like Epicenter. <laughs> oh. Why it's, don't you it, like Epicenter? Epicenter? I mean, it's got an earthquake. I mean, it's got, a, it's got a lot of little holes and stuff. What's that about? I mean, you like... It's, what? It's, it's like it's like Sign Crossing, but with 10,000 more head glitches. It's yeah. It's so campy. I'll give you that. <laughs> <laughs> so, but anyways, uh, this was on Epicenter, and this was a really, really cool match. I'm really excited to get my hands on some videos. I have been promised some, 
Uh, but I watched the live scoreboard. Yes, guys, I am that much of a BF3 nerd. I watch live scoreboards, okay? Judge me all you want. So, <laughs> Hey, I love watching the scoreboards as well. It's so intense because then you see everything light up and, oh, it's getting so close. The tickets are going so much into zero. Oh, it, it really is exciting. Oh, yeah, enjoy. yeah. It's awesome. It's awesome. The mystery of trying to figure out what exactly is going on. But anyways, uh, this came down a, a very close game. Nexus was on the uh, the U.S. side. They ended up winning that by 76 tickets. And I believe the U.S. side is the easy side. Uh, so they ended up winning that with 70, 76 tickets. It was a fairly long game. Uh, very back and forth there in the beginning. But they finally did clinch it there at the end. And then switch sides. Rival did get U.S. side. Now, this was very interesting because at the beginning, Rival looked like they were going to take this thing away. Uh, I mean, they, they had them down, I believe it was by like 40 tickets at one point. And then Nexus slowly started bringing it back, slowly started bringing And I think they even got within like 20 tickets of them. Uh, very, very close match. And, and then finally there at the end, unfortunately, one of the Nexus guys dropped. And it came down to a five on four. And, and Rival just ended up being able to capitalize on them. And they ended up winning that match 112 to zero. So final results for the round five lower bracket was 76 Nexus to Rival Gaming 112. Looking forward to getting those matches going. And then finally, uh, on the 15th, be looking for this one, guys. This is going to be an exciting one. This is going to be No Mercy versus Rival Gaming. So, this is, yeah, this is No Mercy GG versus Rival because the 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 uh, West Coast No Mercy was is out of the tournament, but No Mercy GG, aka the Argentinians, they are still in the tournament. Uh, going to face against Rival Gaming, and here's the thing: they're going to be playing against Rival on the same map they beat them on just a few weeks earlier on Grand Bazaar. That's right. So I'm looking forward to this. I'm seeing if they can actually you know, make it their map. You know, who knows? Maybe it was a fluke. Maybe it was one of those random things where everything went right. Hey, as I like to say in some of my videos, the BF3 gods were smiling down upon them. But let's see if they can actually pull this out. I'm excited for this match. I really am. I think Rival, uh, I think they may be like, I, I, I think possibly in the first match that they played, they were a little bit uh, overconfident. You know, they hadn't been beaten. Everybody knows they're an excellent team. I'm not, I'm not going to doubt that. They're an amazing team. But, you know, people pretty much just expect them to win whatever they get into. So I think maybe, maybe that went to their head a little bit. Don't take it personal, rival guys. Don't. But, you know, they kind of slacked off a little bit. And now I think that they're, they're back on track. Their head's in the right place. They're ready to rock and roll. And I think it's going to be a very tight game. I'm going to give it to rival on this one. How about you? I, I don't know. I, I think that it, it, it it's it's going to be too close to call, and here's why. With the Nexus vs. Rival match in Epicenter, uh, Rival only won by by mostly a 40-ticket spread, and and as you mentioned, one of the Nexus players dropped out uh, during the second round of the game, making it a 5 vs. 4 play. And if, if, if that's the spread, that ticket spread they uh, were able to reap uh, by having a player advantage, I am i don't know if I have that kind of confidence that you do uh, for Rival on, on this next map. But we will see. Let's keep on going, though, uh, to, and talk about the Battlefield 3 Platoon Wars. That's right. So we, did, we forgot to mention this last time, but 3Mob is hosting a 12v12 Platoon War tournament. And now, guys, this has actually been going on since March. And uh, uh, we are in, I think, the final stage. Yes, we are in the final stages right now. So the only match that we have left is going to be Shot Docs versus Edge Gamers. Now, whoever wins this will be able to go on to the finals and face Team Simtech, who was undefeated through the whole bracket. That means that they, they won one, two, three, four games undefeated. And they are going to be playing into the finals. Now, this is going to be pretty interesting because the Shot Docs versus Edge Gamers match is going to be played on Caspian Border. Now, I have heard that Shot Docs has a pretty mean helicopter crew. Uh, I, I believe they're from Italy. So it'll be interesting to see how a primarily infantry team will do with a, a, you know, a, an outside chopper crew, if you will, because they don't really play with them on a normal basis. Uh, except for for this tournament. So it'll be interesting to see how that goes. And Edge Gamers, I know that they've played some 32s. I know we've played against them before. They're, they're solid guys. In fact, Edge Gamers beat out Team Reddit, the team that I was on, on, on Epicenter. And no, that's not why I don't like Epicenter, but it, it's, it's, a, it's a bad map, guys. It's a bad map. 
But uh, any- <laughs> anyway, uh, you know, Edge Gamers, I think they're a fairly solid group. Uh, they've got some well-rounded players in just about every area. So it'll be interesting to see who edges that out. I'm going to say that if it comes down to the battle on B and D, which is primarily infantry, Shot Docs has got this thing covered. Yeah, I, I, I think Shot Docs has got this covered as well because um, Shot Docs also has Billa. I think they have Billa from uh, on their team as well. Yes, they do. They do and, have Billa. And Billa is a very, very good jet pilot. Uh, make no mistake about it. And if he can dominate in the air, it may give them the advantage. So we'll see on that one. And then Team Synthic will play the winner of, of, of this match on, uh, on Pipeline, which is an in-game map. And if Synthic loses on Pipeline... They'll play the next map on Kaiser Railroad. Um, and that's one of the nice things about being on the winner's bracket is you have to lose twice as opposed to loser, loser bracket uh, winners. They have to they have to win twice. And so uh, that's you know kind of interesting in that respect. But uh, let's keep on going, though. BF3 Platoon Wars, good to go in there. Uh, we actually talked about a, 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 another thing last week about uh, the, we, the the weekend circuit for Xbox 360 5e5. There's actually more news there than what we thought. Brett, what was it? That's right. I was contacted by the founder of this platoon and uh, uh, series, and he was telling me, "Hey, you know what? We've got we got you know a lot of people that are that are interested in this. We've had uh, p- plenty of teams show up and play. We also are going to start doing a night cup." So it, what this is basically is going to be um, one night a week, Friday night, uh, four teams will be in a single elimination bracket. It'll be the best of three games on vanilla maps. And uh, basically, you know, it, it's just going to be uh, 5v5 again, but it'll be one night only. It's not going to be, you know, any kind of a series or anything like that. It'll be real quick games in one night. So it should be interesting to see how that goes out. So for all you Xbox guys... Uh, who are uh, trying to get into you know some some comp games, but you don't have necessarily the you know the I guess amount of time to stay in a league. This might be something you guys would be interested in. Yeah, it's real quick. It's you just you show up on Friday night. It's only first four teams to sign up. Sign up. It's a very quick you know number of rounds, three rounds, and you're good to go. And you have a and you have a a winner that Friday night cup. It's real good stuff. And and moving on though to, to the next Xbox event, there's also the Founders Tournament, which is a a series of different uh, a, a, of events from five v five to eight v eight, also on Xbox three hundred and sixty. And what's really cool about this is that if you got two big platoons that have like like ten plus players. If both teams agree to, to 10v10, you can play 10v10. Now, it's minimum 5v5. Uh, you play vanilla maps only, uh, but it's uh, it's really cool. Each team basically uh, chooses two maps and gets to do a burn map. Burn map means that uh, there may be a map you don't like to play, and so you can say, I veto Operation Metro from being played, and, and it can be taken out of that pool. Um, so that's some really cool uh, aspect to it as well. So there's a little bit of, of strategy beyond just uh, playing the given maps. Um, so that's really that's a really good one, and uh, we actually have another one that we didn't mention last week, and that's the Console Sports League. Uh, let's, uh, what's that about, Brett? Yeah, so this was actually brought up uh, to my attention uh, probably about I don't know about six or seven days ago, and basically what this is is e- ESL for consoles. Uh, it's pretty interesting. It's primarily right now dominated by Xbox. Uh, but they do have a, a 4v4 ladder, and they do have a 5v5 infantry-only ladder. Um, and if you guys are interested, we'll have obviously we'll have links to everything in this, guys, in the link uh, in the description below. Uh, but you know, you guys should definitely check this out. It, uh, we were looking at the league statistics, and they they actually have quite a few teams in here. I know there's 20, 27 teams in the 4v4 uh, 4v4 league. Uh, so you know, you guys should definitely check this out if you're interested. In the PS3, uh, I. I I have heard this from other players uh, that PS3 is actually pretty heavy into the com- competitive side. So you guys should definitely check this out and see what you can find. And speaking of PS3, uh, there actually was another tournament that we uh, didn't know much about, but looking into it, it was really cool. Uh, there are two different uh, major PS3 competitive communities out there. One's called Frag Nation, or one's called Urgent Fury. And they had a very big tournament sponsored uh, by... Uh, I can't even pronounce this right. It's Hophage Gamer Edition uh, PVRs. Hophog. Hophog. Hophog Gamer Edition PVR and Gung Ho, which is a which is a supplement dietary supplement company. They put together a very big tournament with Frag Nation and with Urgent Fury, and it was essentially two separate twelve v twelve tournaments. 
each on PS3, and the winner of each of these tournaments would then play each other in a sort of a, a grand championship tournament. And we're already seeing the results from both of these tournaments. Uh, for Frag Na uh, Nation, Team Devastation, which uh, was formerly uh, on Quantic Gaming not too long ago, uh, won Frag Nation, and then uh, Z Combat Forces, or XE Combat Forces, uh, won the Agent Fury Tournament. So these two uh, top teams on the PS3 circuit are going to be playing each other for a bunch of really cool prizes. Um, I think each person gets uh, one of those uh, those Gamer Edition PVRs from, what's the company again? Hopog. Hopog. And they get a bunch of gung-ho supplements. You can actually watch the gung-ho video on their advertisement right now. I got the audio off, which makes it even weirder. But they get a bunch of stuff from them as well. Um, that's going to be really cool. And hopefully, we'll be doing a POVs of not just this finals tournament, but what's really cool is that Team Devastation has given us a bunch of POVs from the, the, the playoffs, and so Brett and I will be doing a cast of a few of these matches, so uh, stay tuned for that. I'm really looking forward to do more console-centric POVs and commentaries. I'm really, it's going to be uh, really awesome, and remember, for you console guys, we've got a PVR. Record your matches, put it on YouTube. Brett and I will cast it. We'd love to do it for you. That's right, and you don't have to put them on there as public. You can put them as enlisted. But another thing on the uh, um, the, the recording aspects of it, uh, you know, we our next week we're going to try and have a couple of console gamers who are actually competitive uh, on on fairly good competitive teams in the console war uh, world. So be looking for next week. We're going to be asking them questions about you know how they got into it, how to get into it where the competitive state is at today because I'm going to be honest with you Dasgro and myself we know the PC st part of it that that that's that's something that we're informed with every day but console stuff it's a little bit harder for us we don't really play console I don't have, ever play console uh, so we don't really know much about it but we're going to try our very best to get people in here who can lead you guys to the right leagues the right ladders and get you guys on teams maybe give you some tips on how to be better on the console so that we can grow this community even bigger that's right. I I am really looking forward to some interviews we'll be doing in the coming weeks uh, with, with some of these uh, players on Xbox 360 and PS3, so stay tuned for that. Um, a few more quick announcements before we wrap this up. Uh, as always, we have the 3Mob Community uh, Days, which are on Thursday nights at 11 p.m. Eastern. That's on PC. We And then we have all the, the various larger leagues and ladders. You have levelbf.com. Uh, they do not only the 32 versus 32 Saturday event but also the Midweek Madness events, uh, which are also sort of uh, themed. Like, for instance, they did a bunch of, uh, of motorcycle uh, races just a few weeks ago. Really cool stuff there. That's uh, right, and I believe that's on Wednesdays at 9 p.m. East. So yes, if you guys are interested, that's PC only, Wednesdays at 9 p.m. East. That's also on PC. Uh, Fist has their regular 32 versus 32 pug matches, which we mentioned uh, in Episode 1. Uh, and then we have Global Conflict, which is 32 versus 32, like Little BF, but it's a little bit closer to hardcore mode in terms of uh, in terms of the uh, server settings, and it's uh, like playing uh, on a risk board. So you don't just play two sides of a good map. You play one side uh, on one map a few times. You've attacked three armies. You attack three times, just like the board game Risk. That makes it kind of cool. And there's 21 CW, uh, which, which is also somewhat similar, uh, and they also do 32 versus 32s. You can sign up for any of these these PC events, the links below, whatever uh, suits your fancy. And then um, finally, guys, if you have any news, send it our way. And and, and Brett, where can, they, uh, where can they send us information? That's right. So you guys can send any kind of news, uh, gameplays, anything like that, that would uh, give us information coming towards this show uh, at battlefieldreplays at gmail.com. And like I said, any information you guys have, if it's console, PC, uh, if it's about a tournament or a ladder or a, a championship match coming up, uh, anything like that, please send it our way. Hey, even if it's something about you know a new sponsorship coming in or a, a LAN, please, we would love to know. We would love to hear about it uh, because this is, this is what we need. We need to be able to expose BF3 uh, to give it more exposure. I'm sorry, to give it more exposure so that people will know what's out there. I mean that that's what we've been lacking I think the most here recently and I think we're going to be able to uh, to help here in the coming months to get this thing even bigger. 
It's not dead yet, guys. It's not dead yet. I think we can still still breathe a little bit of life into it with what we got. I definitely think so. And actually, speaking of which, uh, one thing that we didn't mention is there was a recent uh, 8v8 LAN tournament just this weekend uh, on the West Coast in Sacramento uh, on PC, and No Mercy actually won the tournament. And so congrats to No Mercy on that one. The LAN scene is still alive. Doesn't happen as often as we'd like, but it still happens. So that was really cool to hear about their recent victory. That's right. As always, guys, all the information to everything that we mentioned is going to be at the links below. If you have replays or or news or said, hey, you didn't mention this tournament, send it our way at battlefieldreplays at gmail.com, and uh, and we will uh, be sure to mention it in the next episode. Or if you got a replay and and you got enough replays, we can even do a a, a commentary of your match. So I really hope you send uh, us uh, some footage. A lot of people have already, and we got a huge backlog, and I'm really excited about that backlog because it, it means that we got a lot more work to do. That's so, right. So, anything else, Brett, before we wrap this up? I think that's it, guys. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy the show. Please leave comments, uh, feedback uh, of anything that can help us. And, uh, 